Listening to Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best-selling author, marketing and media strategist Ralph Brogdon. Hello, and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. Part of the Rebelpreneur mystique is to take bold action. Um, taking bold steps to build that business and to create the life and the life experience that you want. And it seems like that's kind of a hard thing to do for a lot of people, especially people who have not been trained or coached in the area of how to overcome their doubts, their fears, and really take those bold steps. So I'm really happy to have today's guest with us. Her name is Jennifer Hooper. She is a life coach for women who are ready to take bold steps. Most of her clients are entrepreneurs who are passionate about their businesses, but they struggle with fear, self-doubt, and lack of confidence. She helps them show up with courage and create exactly the life they want. Jennifer Hooper, welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. Well, thank you, Ralph. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited to dig into this idea of taking bold steps because I think rebelpreneurs, solopreneurs are especially, uh, it, I think boldness is, is essential for any entrepreneur and any business owner, but particularly those who are breaking the rules, those who are going at it on their own, and they don't have the sounding board to bounce off ideas. So uh, that can create a situation where we are afraid to take action. And so we need to figure out strategies for overcoming that and being able to take bold steps forward. So I'm really looking forward to digging in to that with you and getting your tips and strategies for making that happen. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get started as a life coach for women? What got you, what got you motivated in that area? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I unexpectedly got divorced in 2010 and that divorce had a lot of layers to it. I was so lost. Um, there was betrayal, failed real estate investments, bankruptcy, losing my home. Those are kind of the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> um, and each, each one of those brought its own sense of loss and grief. And it all happened around the same time, the same two years that my father got a uh, brain cancer diagnosis and passed away. Mm. And so 2009 and 2010 were absolutely the worst two years of my life. Wow. But. The, the dust settled, and uh, and I kind of looked around at what was around me. Uh, I was surviving, but I was barely scraping by. And I looked around and I said, this isn't it for me. I want more. And so I wiped the slate clean and decided to recreate my life very deliberately. And I started that journey by hiring my own life coach. And it was through that process of um, transforming myself, my own personal growth, and knowing what's available to all of us to really create what we want. It was through that process that I felt inspired to coach other women to basically do what I have done. And I get really juiced up and excited about it. <laughs> it sounds like it. Well, it, you are the classic example of someone that I refer to as turning their mess into their message. Um, yeah. you're, you're able to help others with the same help that you've received. And so that is really, really, uh, that, that, that gives you some credibility, I think, when you're, you're working with clients to help them to see that, uh, we've all been there. And so they can learn from you with your expert guidance, how to take those bold steps and create the life and the business uh, that they want. So tell us a little bit more about what exactly you do for people and who are your ideal prospects? Yeah. Um, so I really love working with women who are willing to do something bold and bold can be defined by 
each and every one of us in a very different way. Sometimes it's just that willingness to actually be true and transparent with how you're feeling. Sometimes it's just hard to say that to people you love and, uh, you know, and it could be your coworkers, it could be even clients, but it's, it's kind of a bold move to just stand up and say what you want to say or what you actually feel. But it may also be as bold as, you know, quitting your corporate job and launching a business or transitioning from that side hustle to, you know, full time, all in, I'm growing this thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I think the reason why I love working with those women is because it is a reflection of the work that I've done and how I've lived my life. I remember the time where I, I was that woman who put themselves last and I felt depleted and I, you know, I survived on energetic crumbs, I like to say. <laughs> and it was my job to believe I had to take care of everybody else around me and never uh, my own stuff. And so I had to learn how to be really bold and uh, show up for my dreams and my desires and, and build the life that I wanted. Hmm. I, I think you read my mind because where I was going with my next question is to focus in on women in particular, because that's who you work with. And I was going to ask, is boldness something that women tend to struggle with more than men? And you partially answered that already. And it's because of the, the roles that women take on, which are different from men, but it seems like a common, um, a common characteristic I hear over and over again. And I hear it from my wife as well, who kind of came to the same conclusion. I put everyone else first and then I come mm -hmm. last. Is that something that yeah. is, is kind of endemic for women as opposed to men? I believe it is 100%. It's, we're, we're nurturers by nature. I think. And so it just feels right to take care of everyone else and then survive on, on what's left. And for me, I used to really believe that whatever I wanted would come after my kids were out of the house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's when I would have the time. That's when I would give myself permission or when it seemed like the right thing to do or the right timing. And I really had to rewire my brain and uh, learn different. It is a skill set, learn different skills, learn how to think differently, learn how to realize that the world is still going to survive. All of these people I love <laughs> and care about are going to be fine. In fact, they're probably going to be better off if I'm taking care of myself first. Hmm. Yeah. So self care is, is really at the heart of, of what we're talking about. So it, it makes sense that you would focus predominantly on, on women because you are a woman and you've been there. So you can definitely mm -hmm. resonate with that. And I think even men, uh, can recognize it, it has the ring of truth here where men's needs are a little bit more different. Um, women in particular, by shifting into a different type of role than what they are accustomed to, whenever we are stretching ourselves to a new dimension, um, it can mm -hmm. create some some challenges, lack of confidence, self-doubt, fear. Uh, so what specifically would you say is the reason why boldness is such a challenge for people? Why, why, uh, why is it that boldness seems to come naturally to some but doesn't come naturally to most? And why does it have to be cultivated? I think it's a practice. And I think you don't become comfortable with it unless you practice and it takes time and repetition. And often we're just not taught that it's okay. It's okay to be bold and put yourself out there. We worry about what other people are going to think. We think we're going to be judged. We uh, have self doubt. We lack the confidence. And honestly, when I think about, those three things, self-doubt, lack of confidence, lack of courage, I think it all boils down to the essence of fear. Fear is a huge obstacle <laughs> and mm -hmm. a powerful motivator. And so what I teach my clients is that fear is going to be along for the ride. You cannot avoid it. If there are things that you want to go for, 
you're just going to have to embrace it. And I work really hard with my clients uh, on mindset. How are they thinking about what it is that they want to do? So I can give you an example. Sure. Yeah, I one of my clients, Haley, she owns and operates a meal prep and delivery service in St. Louis and um kind of on the side. And and that goes re- that's going really really well. You know, she caters to uh, millennials and um empty nesters, people who don't necessarily want to cook for themselves all the time. And she's a nutritionist. She's got this business, makes and delivers the meals. And then on the side, she created this amazing subscription service called the No Diet Diet Club. And it's all about, uh, what's the right word? Um, Teaching people how to prepare their own food in their own healthy way and cooking for one or two people. And every month she rolls out all this new content. But when this subscription service first rolled out, she was nervous about telling people. She was afraid um, what are they going to think? Are people going to think I'm a nuisance or an, I'm annoying? Or are they going to think like, what is she doing now? I thought she was doing this over here. <laughs> and so I really helped her change how she was thinking about this, this service that she, she herself created out of love and passion and filling a need and shift from afraid and nervous to empowered and courageous and it's all through her thoughts and I was just able to say you know you can handle fear it's okay you have to be willing to experience it and so often we just want to push it away Hmm. Um, and as soon as she started telling people imagine this they started signing up yeah (laughs) (laughs) how about that yeah (laughs) how about that yeah so uh, it was super um, uncomfortable for her, but fun for me to watch her transition and really step into her her power and really do something bold, even though it was scary. Mm, yeah, very exciting. And I, I think there is a maybe a misconception that um, people who are successful are fearless. They take bold action. They're mm. fearless. They never have any negative thoughts. And all we see is the outward success. Uh, and, and just yeah. using that example of your client, uh, people who subscribe to the service and they love it and they think it's great, they will never know the doubt, the fear, <laughs> the lack of confidence. Yeah. All the things going on behind the scenes of the person who is creating that service and delivering it to them. They just see the end result and think, wow, this is amazing. This is great. This actually provides value to me. Uh, so, so many times we look at success and we think, well, um, if I'm struggling with doubt or with a uh, lack of confidence or any kind of a fear, then there's something wrong with me or there's something Mm -hmm. wrong with my idea. And so then what happens is we don't do anything. We just sit on it. And then we feel the, um, the negative emotions of regret. Well, what would have happened if I had tried it anyway? So no matter what we're doing, we're losing. And so you help people to, to, it sounds like what you're, you're doing with their mindset is helping them first move away from fear and then mm-hmm. move towards boldness. Boldness would be not yeah. the absence of fear, but boldness would be the the power to take action in spite of my fear. So the fear never goes away. Is that right? That's what I think. Yeah. I think fearless just isn't a thing. But I do believe in being courageous. Yes. Which means the fear is going to come along with you, <laughs> but right. you can still have the courage to stand up and own it and work through it anyway. Mm-hmm. And the way I kind of look at it, I mean, you pointed, you made a very good point about people may feel regret or people may feel scared. Either way, you're going to be uncomfortable, but right. which one is going to get you closer <laughs> to what you actually want? Yeah. I choose like the fear. Like right. I'm going to, I don't want to live with regret personally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I can regret the things that I never did and nothing ever happens. I can experience fear 
and take action anyway in spite of my fear. And then that fear will turn to the exhilaration of success when I get the result that I want. But even if you don't get the result that you want the first time around, you don't quit. And that's where the courageous comes mm. from because we can tell stories about our successes. We step through our fears. We, we made the presentation or we, we pitched the, the deal and we got the thing that we were trying to get. But there are a lot of actions that we take, however boldly and courageously we take them that don't get us the result that we want. Then I would think that what you're teaching people is not to give up in that one moment. But boldness and acting courageously to create the life and the business that they want, it is a lifestyle decision. It is an ongoing process where we never quit. We never give in, even if we don't get success right off the bat with the very first transaction that we try to apply it to. Yeah, I I totally agree. I mean, so often we're so afraid to take a step because we think we're going to do it wrong or because we've never done it before or because we don't know how. But I teach my clients uh, something that has stuck with me from one of my coaches is that you're not going to know how to do something until after you've already done it. <laughs> like you, you aren't going to know. You have to take the steps, even if it means you're going to fall down and get back up and try again because every one of those quote, failures, which is really a lesson, mm -hmm. like you're going to take away something from, you're going to learn how to do it better. You're going to learn to stop doing what didn't work. You're going to say, how can I do this differently? And it's through that process that you do figure out how to do it. And um, it's, you do have to be bold to take the steps. Absolutely. And, and I don't think that education will ever equate to or replace experience. Your experience can become your education, but I think this explains why a lot of people will go to seminars about how to build their business. They'll, they'll take courses, they'll read books, uh, but they never get around to taking action and it's all avoidance. They are afraid to take action. Mm -hmm. They want to, they want to take flawless they want to, to take flawless action, flawless execution. And they think, well, if I study everything there is to know about this and learn how to do it perfectly, then I can do it. And I won't experience the pain of failure. And that is wishful thinking because we're not, <laughs> we're never going to get to a place where we execute anything perfectly. And a lot of the lessons that we need to learn, we can't learn them in a book or in a classroom. We have to learn them by actually putting them into practice. And then, as you said, it's not failure. It's an experience. It's a learning opportunity. It's feedback, not failure, that teaches us yeah. so that we can refine the approach and then just keep plugging away. I mean, this is this is some pretty powerful stuff, Jennifer. Yeah, I agree. I mean, look, we we don't like, as humans, being uncomfortable. Discomfort feels terrible. So... <laughs> Taking that step to put yourself out there is discomfort. But the fact is, life is 50 50. It's half amazing joy, happiness, you know, love experience. And then it's half disappointment, self doubt, scared um, uh, experiences. Yes. So if it's going to be 50 50 anyway, right. you might as well show up for yourself. That's might how as well. I look at it. Might as well. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense. So when, when you're trying to move someone to, to, to move the needle from fear towards boldness, um, what are some things that you recommend that people can begin to do even right now that they would start to, to move the needle a little bit and see some immediate improvement in their self confidence? Yeah, it really boils down to that willingness to be uncomfortable. I mean, I don't mean to repeat myself, but I don't think I can say it enough either. It's like, where can you be very intentional about um, planning on that discomfort and deciding in advance how you are going to handle it? Mm. What are you going to do? And that is so much, um, oh, what's the right word I'm looking for? There's so much empowerment in planning in advance rather yes. than responding. 
Yeah, that's like, real. That, okay, because so you're if thinking I fall down it. and people judge me, and you know mm-hmm. this this happens, what am I going to make it mean? Oh, I'm going to make it mean that that's about them. That's not about me. Right. That is a good example. I like that because um, very often, without thinking in advance how we're going to respond to something, we end up reacting to it, and usually the reaction yeah. is negative. So you you help people to decide in advance how they're going to respond to the inevitable setbacks, the criticism, the negative emotions, and to deal with it um, in, in a way that's more positive, to, to redirect that Absolutely. into a positive direction and, instead of uh, being wiped out or sidelined by that. You got it. That's it. Now it's easier said than yeah. done. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of repetition. Yeah. And, you know, I think everybody should have a life coach. I've never not had my own coaches for the last five years um, because we don't see our own blind spots. We don't um, have that objective perspective. We're in it. And mm-hmm. uh, our coach really helps us see things differently, think differently so that we can move forward and not get ourselves stuck, get out of our own way. Yeah. And, and it really helps, uh, with someone like you to, to coach them to be able to see those, those blind spots and also to give them feedback, um, so that they're not in this, uh, this loop in their head of, uh, going around spinning in circles in their mind and, and never moving forward. So you're actually able to, to guide them and help them to move forward, which is really exciting. What are you working on right now, Jennifer, that has got you? excited and motivated that you'd like to share with our listeners? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Um, I have a super fun Facebook group called Bold Women Gather Here. And <laughs> I have a ball in that group. I post challenges, offer some ad hoc coaching. I do interviews with members as they are sharing some of their bold experiences. And I do free training in there. Uh, I just finished up a three-day training series The first day was on courage. The second day was on self-trust. And the third was on confidence. And uh, as soon as my, uh, as soon as anyone joins that group, I also send out a free five day uh, email training series called get what you want faster and easier. And it's just, it's so much fun. We have a good time in that group and in all the training that's in there. Excellent. Well, that that sounds uh, exciting. Get what you want. What, What was that? Get what you want. Faster and easier. I mean, you, you can't you can't come up with anything better than that. Get what you want faster and easier. Um, how can our listeners connect with you to find out more about that and, and the other things that you offer? Yeah, um, my website is jennifer-hooper.com. I've been trying to get the jenniferhooper.com URL for years. It's just not available. So there is a dash between my first and last name. Okay. A Gen- hyphen. Jennifer Dash Hooper or Jennifer hyphen Hooper. <laughs> that sounds yes. interesting, doesn't it? Jennifer hyphen Hooper. Um, so yeah. Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer dash Hooper.com. And we'll have that link on the Rebelpreneur website as well. Well, for any of our listeners who are struggling with uh, fear, self doubt, lack of confidence and, and need to take those bold steps to create the life that they want and the business that they want. Um, I encourage you to reach out to Jennifer so that she can uh, get you hooked up. Jennifer, this has really been great. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you'd like to leave us with? I guess I would like to share, you know, and encourage people to, to remember that we only have one life, one. And so why shouldn't we make it our best life? I believe that we have so much potential and growth and transformation to us uh, available to us, every single person. And I just want people to go for it. Just go for it. (laughs) Sounds great. Well, that's that enough. That's the, uh, that's the sort of encouragement that people need someone like you in their corner rooting for them. So well done. Jennifer Hooper is a life coach for women who are ready to take bold steps She helps entrepreneurs who are passionate about their businesses, but struggle with fear, self-doubt, and lack of confidence. She helps them show up with courage and create exactly the life they want. So if that's you, reach out to her at jennifer-hooper.com. Jennifer, it's been a real pleasure to chat with you. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom on Rebelpreneur Radio today. I really appreciate it. 
Well, thank you for having me. This has been a lot of fun. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.